continue in an attitude of praise, turn to Psalm 30. When you get there, I'd like to invite you to stand. I'll read and you can read along. Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you've healed me. O Lord, you have brought me up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, all you saints, and give thanks to his holy name, For his anger is but a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry. And to the Lord, I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Psalm 30. You may be seated. Good morning. morning. That wasn't bad. Um, I was surprised as I opened my email this morning to, uh, oh no, it changed. I had the the editorial page here of the uh, Quad City Times. The opening lines were exactly what I intended, oh, I found it, exactly what I intended to say. This, the Sunday following Thanksgiving seems an appropriate time to take stock in what we're thankful for in the Quad Cities, except for the Quad City part. That's exactly how I wanted to start this. I don't know how they got a hold of my notes. Maybe I got hacked, but whatever. When Ben asked me to preach a month ago or so, uh, he said, why don't you focus on Thanksgiving? And uh, I said, well, you know, it is the first Sunday in Advent. Maybe I could go with Christmas. No, I'd really rather you stuck with Thanksgiving, so okay. I had a thought that maybe I could just preach about why I'm thankful for Christmas. I confessed the sin and God forgave me. Um, There's a lot that's said about Thanksgiving. You know, people all over our country celebrate it whether they know about God or not. Uh, I read a few quotes from notable people this week. Woody Allen, he said, I'm thankful for laughter, except when milk comes out my nose. Um, W.C. Fields some of us remember him. Uh, he says, I, I have wine with my Thanksgiving, uh, and sometimes I eat the food. Um, Phyllis Diller, I don't even remember her. She was this wild, sarcastic comedian years ago. She said, my cooking is so bad that on Thanksgiving, my kids think we're remembering Pearl Harbor. Um, <laughs> the one I liked that I, that I read was... Uh, Supposedly, there was this Indian woman, this Native American woman, that was uh, invited, told that they were going to invite the pilgrims and have that first Thanksgiving dinner. And her reaction was, oh no, don't feed them. If you feed them, they'll never leave. (laughs) And here we are. We never left. We kind of took over their country, didn't we? Well, anyhow... I am thankful for so many things today. You know, if we stop and think about all the things we're thankful for, the list just goes on and on. I am so thankful for, for the Lord, for what he's done in my life. When I, when I left First Free after being here for uh, 18 years, I, I quoted a song that Petra sang where, 
one of the lines is, Lord, the way you've blessed my life is more than I deserve. And I think we all feel that way. God has given me a, a wonderful family, a wonderful wife, three great kids who are all actively involved in their churches. In, in fact, uh, a month ago, we were in California. I got to hear my daughter preach. Uh, she's uh, on the staff of a church out there. And uh, my son produces worship resources as his ministry, as his job, and we're going to get to see one of those a little bit later in the service. So, uh, so many things. I, I'm thankful for my grandkids and on and on and on, so many things. You know, this week as I was thinking about what I'm thankful for, I'm really thankful that Steve McNichol, who was chairman of the search committee, uh, sat down and wrote me a letter and said, uh, we're looking for a youth pastor. You know, would you like to come and be considered a candidate? And uh, what happened after that really changed my life, Gail's life, uh, and our kids' life eventually because it determined where we would spend. Well, it's been 48 years now. Uh, I stood here in November of uh, 1976, uh, not to preach, but to be installed. And, you know, it determined where we would live. Our thought was we'd lived in Texas when we got married and we moved to California and, well, let's try the Midwest for a few years and then we'll move on maybe to the East Coast and, uh, or go back to Texas or California, you know. That was 48 years ago and we're still here <laughs> and we're still praising God for what's happened in our lives. Well, I don't want to, you know, go on and on about my personal things. I want to get into the Word a little bit. So what does it mean to be thankful? Uh, people use that phrase, I'm thankful for this, I'm thankful for that. You know, uh, some say, you know, you can thank your lucky stars that blah, blah. Uh, you know, do the stars really have anything to do with what happens in your life? I, I guess some people think so, but uh, not really. Uh, some will say, oh, I'm thankful to the big guy upstairs, you know, kind of meaningless. Um, Maurice Chevalier got a little closer to it when he said, thank heaven for little girls. So, you know, he's thanking heaven. That's, that's on the right track. But uh, people usually overlook the fact that Thank is really a transitive verb. It needs a direct object, okay? You have to thank someone or something, or you're not really thanking. And, and I think the world has really watered down the whole phrase uh, or the idea of being thankful. They say, well, we should be grateful for this or that, but they're not really pointing to where our blessings come from, you know, from, from God. So why should we thank God what does the Bible say about it? You know, I, I had a series of sermons at my last church about what the Bible says about blank, blank, blank. And, and it ran through the Thanksgiving season. So I said, I had a sermon, what does the Bible say about giving thanks? Well, as you're probably aware, there is far more than you can fit into one sermon uh, about giving thanks in the Bible. Uh, it would take probably a year's worth of sermons. But I, I briefly reviewed some of the incidences of thanksgiving. In fact, they go all the way back to Adam and Eve because Eve thanked God uh, for the help that he gave her when she was giving birth to her first son. And then, in a way, the first thanksgiving service followed that when Abel thanked God for his flocks. And, uh, of course, we know that situation didn't end very well, but... Uh, Daniel set a very good example that even when he was commanded not to pray to any other god uh, but, you know, Darius, and uh, as the king, he still got in his window where everybody could see him, and he thanked God three times a day. Uh, Jesus also set a great example, of course. We know he was thanking the Father constantly. He thanked God that... Um, he, that he was able to lay, raise Lazarus from the dead. He thanked God for the cup and the bread, as we did this morning. So, so much, Genesis to Revelation, so much about thanksgiving. Uh, there's a few incidences of 
the things that we do in our life where we should be giving thanks. That Thanksgiving should be a part of it. Uh, one we find in Philippians 4, 6, where it says, uh, well, that's kind of tiny back there. Let's see. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know, you can thank God for the answers to your prayer right as you're praying them. You don't have to wait for the answers. You should thank God once you see the answers, whether they're what you wanted or not. In every situation, prayer and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Thanksgiving should be an integral part of our prayer lives. Uh, another one that's mentioned is in Colossians 3.16, where uh, it talks about, I won't read the whole verse, but it talks about when we sing and give praise to God, to do it with gratitude. Uh, in other words, with thanksgiving as we sing our song. We, we did a lot of that this morning because those songs were about giving thanks. We should be thankful that we have voices to praise God and to, to give him honor. I, I didn't put this one down on a slide. I thought of it after I already made it up. But, you know, our, our giving, when we give tithes, offerings, gifts to God, uh, should always be done with thanks. It's a way of expressing thanks to God. Uh, I think of uh, years ago, Gail and I were in uh, San Francisco, and there's this street performer who was rather funny. He uh, he blew, you know, fire out of his mouth and stuff, and he called himself the Great Zucchini, and uh, he said, thanks for coming, but uh, there are more sincere ways of showing thanks, and he had his little, you know, collection pot there, and giving is a, a sincere way of, of showing thanks. That's another way we can give thanks to God. Well, what about everything else? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. There's a difficult word to deal with there. Uh, sometimes in another translation it says in everything give thanks. All, everything. What does that leave out? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> in everything. Okay. Now there are a lot of things that are easy to thank God for. Uh, we've met, mentioned some of them, but what about the difficult circumstances? You know, there, there are times in our lives where it's kind of hard to give thanks, and uh, we need to know what that really means. Uh, one of the things I'm thankful for is that I had a pastor uh, in, in my seminary years at the church where I met Gail, and uh, his name was Ron Dunn. He gave a lot of really good messages on prayer, giving thanks. And he helped clarify this. He, uh, he taught us the principle of why we give thanks in all circumstances. First of all, he pointed out that it says in, not for, okay? I mean, think of the people down in Florida when Milton and Helene came along uh, not long ago. You know, do we expect them to go, oh God, I am so grateful that all my belongings, my house has been destroyed. No, we're not supposed to fake it. We're not supposed to, you know, have this feeling of gratitude. But the important thing I learned from Ron Dunn was we thank God for adversity because we're acknowledging that he's in control. Uh, that he can do what Romans 8.28 says, you know, make everything work together for good, that we can grow, that we can take the experiences in our life that aren't so happy and turn them into something good. Um, I'll share a personal illustration. When we left my last church in 2005, uh, where I had been the pastor for 11 years, uh, we lived in a parsonage, and of course we couldn't continue to live there. And within a, a few months of leaving that church, uh, I was jobless and churchless and homeless. <laughs> Although, you know, I, I remember praying to God at the time I resigned from the church. It was the first time I'd ever left a job when I wasn't going to another job. I didn't know what the future held. And I remember telling people, 
You know, I can't wait for a year or two from now to, to look back on this and see what God has done. And I was able to thank God in advance for, the, for what would result from the circumstances. And I won't go into all the details of what did happen, but God provided in an amazing way. You know, we, we, we read in the scripture about to him who is able to do exceeding abundant beyond all we add or ask or think. And that was true in our lives. So many, so many things got settled financially and with jobs that were given, and I could go on and on. But uh, really, really learned the truth about giving thanks when the bad circumstances come, when things aren't going so well. There's another good reason why we should give thanks, and again, it's right there in that verse. It says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The context here, there's three things we're, we're to do. We're to pray without ceasing, we are to be joyful, and we are to give thanks. Three things that are God's will for us. You want to do the will of God, give thanks, be thankful. That's part of it. There are so many ways, so many things, like I said, that we need to be thankful for. And my son, a few years ago, produced a video where a man will come out and just give you tons of things, tons of examples of things to give thanks for. So let's watch that now. Think about it. Think about how these things apply to your life, okay? Give thanks for the good days. When the traffic lights all turn green, when promotions come and bad habits are broken. Give thanks for warm meals and the company of friends. Give thanks for undeniable blessings and clear direction. When the music floods your soul and the worship songs flow without effort. Give thanks for coffee and clothing and hope that the two never mix. Give thanks for the mother who battles daily in prayer, for the father working three jobs, for the brothers and sisters who build blanket forts and read bedtime stories. Give thanks for sons and daughters and all our family who remind us of what truly matters. Give thanks for the stranger who holds the door open and the lifelong friend who holds you when life is broken. Give thanks for the hard days, for the phone call that brings life crashing down, for jobs lost and friendships fallen into conflict. Give thanks for the anger that reminds us we are human and the tears that express more than words could ever fathom. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, your energy spent, your spirit fallen, and your only option is to fall to your knees before your Holy Father and cry out, God, please help me. For in that moment, his power is made perfect. His love is made evident. He becomes your strength your comfort, and your salvation. Give thanks for the power of redemption, from Genesis to Revelation, for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his son than give up on his children. For nail-pierced hands, for brilliant dawns, for the cool touch of rain and the simplicity of a quiet day for all things great and small. Let us give thanks. Mm. Mm. Thank you, I'll tell my son you applauded his video. I want, want to just emphasize three things as we, as we close today. Colossians 2.7 says, overflowing with thankfulness. You know, when you fill up 
uh, a glass too full or something, it overflows, it spills out. And that's kind of a, that's a good picture of how thankfulness should be in our hearts. We should overflow. It should be so much a part of us that it spreads to other people around us. Uh, and, and the context of that verse is actually spiritual growth. If you want to grow spiritually, you need to give thanks. If you're never giving thanks to God, it's going to harm your spiritual growth. So keep that in mind as well. Not to give thanks is a sin of omission, in fact. Uh, you know, I got a letter from my dad when I was in college, back before email and, you know, cell phones and all that. We wrote letters. Some of you remember that, you know, some of those old folks. I uh, got a letter from my dad, and I remember him saying, uh, whatever day it was, was a beautiful, gorgeous day. And rather than be guilt of the sin of ingratitude, I went out and played golf. So, you know, that's how my father expressed gratitude for beautiful weather. But, uh, yeah, if we don't give thanks, that's really a, a sin of omission. Another thing we need to do is to thank others, not just God, you know, but thankfulness should be something we spread to other people. Okay, I've got to confess a, something I did years ago. Uh, we went to a bowling alley, and I parked the car, got out, and as I'm walking in, someone said, hey, sir, you left your lights on. And my reaction was, oh, you know, i got to go back. And, you know, I was kind of angry at the guy for, you know, pointing out to me something I'd done. And uh, I was reminded that, you know, I really should have thanked him for that. And uh, so that one kind of stuck with me. And, oh, we have a neighbor across the alley who has come over mm, probably two or three times at night and knocked on the door to, to let us know that uh, I left the garage door open. And I've matured a little bit since that bowling alley incident and uh, my reaction now is oh thanks so much <laughs> you know that's how we should react someone's trying to help us we thank them i read a story this week um i had the whole thing in, on a piece of paper but i, I think i remember it pretty well uh, uh about thanking other people about how important it is how we should be determined to give thanks. It shouldn't be an afterthought. There was a, a couple of servicemen, Navy men, flying over Alaska back in 1953, and their engine died, and they had to crash land in a bunch of trees. And this man, whose, whose name was Levin, uh, woke up in a hospital, and all he could remember was that there was something in his mind about a dog sled coming, and, and that was about it. You know, he didn't remember the crash or anything else. He just, he remembered that dog sled, and he wanted to thank the man. Well, he got, he made a full recovery. He and his uh, co-pilot made a full recovery, and for years, it just ate away at him because he wanted to thank that man, and finally, about 20 three years later, I think it was, he went back up to Alaska, um, to that little town where, near where he had crashed, and uh, he started asking around about it, and got nowhere, and finally gave up, and as he's in the airport, the little airport there to fly to Anchorage and then back home, uh, he got in a conversation with a lady, and he mentioned why he was there and how there was uh, someone who had a dog sled that had rescued him and he owed his life to him and all that. And the lady said, well, you know, my, my grandfather had a dog sled he's, years ago. And uh, well, let me check on him with him on this. And she got a hold of her grandfather and uh, pretty soon the man, uh, Levin, and the, and the lady were on their way to the man's house and uh, they recounted the whole story, and sure enough, that was the man who'd rescued him. And he finally, after 20-some years, finally got to say thank you to that man for rescuing him and saving his life. Now, that's determination. That's being thankful. The third thing I wanted to put up with is just let your life reflect an attitude of gratitude. Uh, Make it a lifestyle. Just make it something that happens in your life constantly. 
we celebrated Thanksgiving, but God doesn't want us to, to stop with just one day a year, right? Uh, and that, we don't just take it for granted. We want to fulfill the command to give thanks because that's what it is there in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks. Uh, most people are grateful for a, a, a nice day to have a great meal, maybe watch a little football, but we want to make it a lifestyle. And not just something we say, right? Jesus got on the Pharisees for saying things without having a life to back it up. We want to live in thanksgiving. I've heard the word thanks living. That's really what it should be. So today let's remember that. We want to thank God. We want to overflow with thanksgiving. We want to remember to thank other people as well as God and let our actions be doers of the word and not just speakers speaking thanks only. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for so many things. Um, we can't begin to enumerate them all in a few minutes here. We should just be humbled as we think about all these things, like all the things in the video that we can be thankful for, and that's just scratching the surface. Uh, you are our God. You have rescued us. You have saved us. Even though we were alienated from you, you provided your son, which we celebrated in communion today, how he gave his life. He let his blood be shed. He, he let his body be broken. He paid the penalty for our sins. We are so thankful for that. We have a church today that meets to worship because of that. We are thankful for that, Lord. Let our hearts be full of thanksgiving as we go from here today. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.